All right, guys, it's called the election that really matters. This is still Razor content now. This is a video from three years ago. I wonder if there's going to be any, you know, meta memes being made about the election cycle last, you know, time. But hey, this is actually election season two. It's gonna, things are going to get really hyped for like the next month. I'm not sure who's going to win, but hey, let's see what Echidna says. I don't know if you guys heard or not, but America's having a big election pretty soon. Oh boy. So I thought it would be a perfect time to escape from that horrific reality by talking about the re-zero election instead. There are The horrific reality is upon us again and in another month or so, right? We're about to elect another senile motherfucker or Kamala. There are five candidates competing to become the 42nd king of Lagunica, Emilia, Priscilla, Anastasia, Krush, and Felt. Okay. I'm going to be talking about their politics and deciding which candidate I would vote for by the end of the video, so feel free to let me know in the comments who you would vote for. Right now, I would never vote. I mean, it depends on which state of the arc you're in in ReZero, I guess, because then it's going to show you more, you know, uh, about what they are. But let's let's just imagine that everyone is like idealized. Emilia is not this weak girl that you see in the royal selection. She's very competent. I think I would still, if we're just judging based off of what their platform values are, right? What their like policies are. And if I was a member of a Lugunica, like, again, you need to put yourself in the shoes of, like, I guess, a Lugunican person. I'd probably vote for Krush. Krush, something about the Covenants, right? Relying on the dragon, that doesn't sit well with me. A nation for its people. Krush is basically saying, make Lugunica great again. It sounds pretty good. Anastasia is a money grubber who just wants to own Lugunica as, like, a landlord. Hell, she's from Kataragi, isn't she? How the fuck is she allowed to be a landlord here? Part of me kind of is pissed off about that. Plus, on the top of that, she's like just peak capitalist. So it depends on how well she's doing this. But if Lugunica has a lot of like eco economic uh, problems because of, you know, just bad maintenance of the economy, maybe Anastasia could show up and improve everyone's lives by just getting the money going up. But there could also be the other way where, you know, only the top elites get to, you know, profit while the bottom just like suffer even more. So instead of raising rather than uplifting everybody, maybe the wealth gap disparity could be even worse under Anastasia's rule. So I'm not going to go with that. Priscilla literally doesn't say fucking anything. She says, huh, just fucking vote for me. Everything I do is in my favor. That's it. Let me settle things. Bitch, you ain't got any policies. I'm not voting for you. Felt is just an anarchist. Now, if you're a doomer, if you just hate everything that's going on in society and you just wanted a complete server reset, think of it like this. You're playing a video game. Everyone is like late game. They're hogging all the resources and you have to play on this fucking server as a new player. You're going to get fucking spawn camp. There's no way you can catch up. And Felt's policies could just kind of eradicate that. It's like a better, it's like a server reset. Everything starts from zero. And then Amelia is all about the racial inequalities, you know, living, you know, pretty living where everyone is treated equal. If you're a demi-human, you probably want to vote for Amelia. If you're a regular human, you probably don't want to, but I right now, I'm going for Krush. And remember to actually vote in real life if your country is having an election. But let's go ahead and start with Krush Karsten, who mm -hmm. I thought was probably the most qualified candidate. Yes. At until then. <laughs> At least as of season one. She was well acquainted with the members of the royal family before they died, so it- Yeah, this is a guy that was like a childhood friend. This, this honestly looks like a fucking wedding. Like, did they get married or some shit? But I thought this guy got like, uh, friend zoned, right? And he died- just before Subaru showed up, like, what, like a month ago or something before? Acquainted with the members of the royal family before they died, so it would make sense for Krush to be the one to carry out their wishes. Her divine protection of wind reading tells her when someone's lying to her, so that would make her a formidable negotiator as well. She seemed like she would make a strong, honorable, and firm leader who mm -hmm. wanted to make the kingdom a better place. Her I feel like I could depend on her. She is not this frail, weak girl. She knows exactly what Lugunica needs. She's very stern. She has charisma. She's shown amazing leadership in arc, you know, arc three. Like I'd vote for her. Her approach to political philosophy reflected an idea where citizens would be compensated on the basis of their individual effort and ability. It sounds all right amazing. on paper, but like all political philosophies, it has its flaws as well. I hope that you become a great ruler, the kind of dictator who abandons the weak. Damn. Under Krush's leadership, not everyone would be born with the same opportunities and the like. Yeah, so like when you go on, basically a lot of people don't understand this because they come from a lot of really like privileged places where you say, you look at a homeless person, you say, ha, just get a home, bro. Just get a job. 
how the fuck are they supposed to do that, right? And what I'm trying to explain to you is the concept of not equality, but like equity. Is that the right term? Let me bring you a picture that may better represent what I'm trying to say. Equality versus equity, right? Image. Yeah, this is it. Wait, this is, there's like an even better one. So first up, I'll show you this image. Uh, one second, let me bring it here. So in this picture, what do you see? On the left side, you have equality. And equality is such that everyone will be given the same amount of resources to succeed. But here's the thing. Some people are just born taller. Some people are born into the right family. And if you give everyone the same box as the opportunity, the person that's born in the wrong family, the poor area, it doesn't help, right? So this is the concept of equity. It's not about giving people the same amount of resources, but trying to make sure that the end outcome is roughly equal so that the little guy can also see the fucking game. Now, here's another picture, actually. This is pretty funny. Let's look at this one. <laughs> what is this fucking picture? <laughs> okay, this is, uh, I don't know what the fuck this one is. I just saw it right beside. Reality <laughs> is that the big guy will always get everything. Yeah, this is basically capitalism right now. The rich will just keep getting richer. He has a lot of fucking bucks. He doesn't even need this. Yet he just gets, keeps getting the better seat. What the fuck? And this, is got, this guy is like the paycheck, the paycheck guy. This guy is the homeless person. Equality is, again, the same example we gave where everyone has the same amount of resources to succeed. Equity, again, is that, you know, same thing where we're talking about, you know, giving more resources to, you know, disadvantageous people such that they can all keep up. And then, liberation. <laughs> Just get rid of the fucking gate. Who created the gate? Think about this, right? This is pretty funny. Who created this fucking artificial gate here? Just break that shit down. And maybe this is what liberation is. Felt. This is Felt's answer. <laughs> this is Felt's answer. The reality is Anastasia's answer, equality is Crucia's answer, and equity, I think, is Amelia's answer. This actually, this picture actually, perfectly, maybe not perfectly, but I think it's a pretty damn good example of every candidate minus Priscilla. I have no clue what the fuck Priscilla's would be all about. Lives of the underprivileged wouldn't really improve, so her ideology wasn't perfect, but it was what she truly believed was best for the kingdom, mm -hmm. so you've got to give her credit for at least trying. However, Krush also had a the selfish dragon. desire as well. The dragon still upholds its duty to protect us. It was in the royal family's contract, and must be honored till it's fulfilled. Wait a sec. I vow, the dragon will forget its demanded covenant. Mm -hmm. The dragon's empire of Lagunica belongs not to that beast, but to its people. She won I don't feel that that's selfish. I do not have a good feeling about the dragon nor the covenants that we have. It's supposed to protect the Lugunica. I honestly think that the dragon might have fucking did the plague ship because the covenant is blood ties with the royal families. That's one of the theories. The other one is maybe Capella killed them all in secret. The other one is maybe Pandora. But like, I don't think the dragon is good for Lugunica. Maybe we need to rely on the past, but right now... I feel like whatever Krush wants is kind of hinting at that. There's also another thing with the curse in the Trial 3, the disaster that's come yet, that's, that's yet to come yet, where Krush talks about overcoming some sort of curse. And at that point, I was thinking about how does this make sense? What, what do we know about Krush? She hates the dragon. Is it related to the dragon? I'm not sure if this is during, you know, when did she get the curse? Did she get it before or is this after because this is the future event? I'm not sure. Maybe that would be selfish, right? But I still think that the dragon is not really a good thing overall for us. Wanted to sever the kingdom's ties with the divine dragon due to a personal experience from her childhood. This was also something she believed would benefit the kingdom overall, but to me, it felt more like a personal grudge. I don't okay. know if you've read the first. Well, even if it's and this is the EX stories, and I think we'll be we'll be we'll be covering this content one of these days. Don't worry, I got a lot of plans with extra reserve content. This is a fucking great picture. But even if it's born out of selfish desires, if the outcome helps everybody, I think that's selfless. DX novel, we can talk about it in the comment section. But obviously, guys, as we saw in the first episode of season two, Krush Karsten's memories were sadly eaten and her yeah. personality changed a lot as a result. In fact, Krush is pretty much a different person entirely, so I'm wondering if her political beliefs have changed as well, and I'd like to know if she still wants to cut ties with the dragon. Yeah, and will that matter once we get Rem and everyone back? I'm honestly assuming that Otto right now has been eaten as of ReZero Season 3, Episode 3, right? But once we defeat Gluttony, 
I would hope that everyone's memories and names come back. If it doesn't, that'd be so fucking troll. But because of what happened to her, I'd say for now, it's probably best to consider some of the other candidates. However, I don't think Miss Karsten would be a bad choice overall, especially compared to some of the other options. Yeah. Anastasia Hoshin is the head of the Hoshin Trading Company from Kararagi. She's a successful businesswoman and seems to be a relatively honest person. But during negotiations, Anastasia tries to stay at least a couple steps ahead of the other- Two steps ahead party and tends to be a bit manipulative in order to achieve the outcome she's pursuing. So theoretically, she'd be able to bring great success to Lagunica by- And here's the part, right? Is she gonna be someone that uplifts everyone out of poverty where everyone's gonna be given like universal basic income or some sort of like social security net where everyone can live without feeling the desire of- uh, feeling the need of like, oh no, I need to fucking, you know, survive today too. I'm, I'm, if I don't hustle, I'm gonna die. What's going to happen? Is she going to uplift everybody? Or is the existing wealth gap going to get even separated even more due to the capitalist mindset? By using these tactics against outsiders and the other kingdoms. Plus, her Kararagian roots would help with foreign policy and her business has the potential to improve Lagunica's economy. For sure. However, the reality is Anastasia is a very selfish person. I think she literally wants to be a landlord for Lugunica, bro. I don't have a good feeling about it. I'm a greedy little gal, so I want everything. No amount of commercial success can satisfy me. Exactly. I want to have my very own nation. She like, bro, do you want to live in a world where it's that? Like, think about, like, Jeff Bezos or fucking Elon Musk is taking over America. It's just, it's just corporations ruling over you. You want that shit? I don't know if I want that shit, man. Again, if the person's intentions are good and they're not just like this greedy, greedy capitalist, which she pretty much have said just now, I bet the living situation would get better for everyone. But if the economy improves, do you think everyone's going to get a piece of the pie? I don't fucking think so. I think the top brass, the nobles and whoever is at the very top are going to profit even more and things are going to get even more unfair just wants to make as much money as possible and doesn't really care if it's at the expense of the less fortunate. She would expand the Hoshin Trading Company to Lagunica and dominate the marketplace, effectively creating a monopoly and putting Ooh. a lot of others out of business. That ain't the good. The economy might improve overall, but most of the benefit would go to the upper class and exactly. people like the Appa salesman would suffer in exchange. Bro, Appa I can't do this. My man Karoman Rich is gonna be out of business. He can't fucking sell his appas right here because Anastasia will open up a fucking shop called like Better Appas right beside him. Like, how many times have you seen like a local fucking coffee store just like chill and then like a Tim Hortons or some sort of like franchise shows up and just runs them out of business? It's fucking, it's sad. You see like Walmart showing up and all these like mom and pops in a grocery store, they go out of business. It's fucking sad. Change. Plus, if the Hoshin Trading Company became too large, it would harm the economy and a lot of the citizens would have to either starve or work for Anastasia. She's not the best candidate to vote for and we'd probably never see her tax returns, but she still isn't the worst option. Priscilla Bariel. This might be the worst. This Priscilla is a wild card. She has no policies. She believes that she is the center of the universe. I mean... It's funny because Priscilla is the sun, sun princess, Yang sword, right? Yang, Yang is literally sun in that context, right? She is the center of the universe, according to heliocentric theory, right? And everything is going to work out to her favor. Okay, great. For you, what about us? What happens to us? was born with extraordinarily good luck, as you can see. But yep. that's about the only positive thing I have to say about her. Priscilla believes that the world was made to favor her and sees everyone else as peasants. In fact, like, I don't think we're gonna be a feudal monarchy. I think that we're gonna go into, like, actual dictatorship. In fact, until Subaru showed her one, she had never seen an appa that wasn't already peeled for her. And the weirdest thing is... She's also one of the few people that actually eats an appa on screen, meaning, like, bad things might happen to Priscilla in the future. She's had multiple husbands in the past, all of whom ended up passing away. She fucked this guy? <laughs> is this Rickert? Wait, this is not Rickert. No, 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 no. This is not Rickert. Priscilla's ha I mean, we, we know in the season three, re not recap, but episode one, that, like, Priscilla's clout's going up because, like, she was able to... I don't know, get all the assets of a really, like, rich noble, right? So, she just, she's a black widow, man. She just taking these husbands for all their net worth, all their assets. I bet she's killing them. 
away mysteriously. As for her qualifications, it seems that she would be a better fit as the Empress of Wallachia, but regardless, a kingdom ruled by Priscilla would absolutely be a totalitarian state. Un it, totalitarian, totalitarian state. Sometimes when you have a charismatic dictator who actually cares about their people, it can be such an ideal society where because that person that rules is such a humble and kind person that is so decisive with their decisions, no more bureaucratic, you know, po um, you know, upper people are getting in the way. Like you, you see in democracy, like bills can't get passed. Everyone's fucking blocking shit. So like dictatorship, <laughs> it may work, but like someone like Priscilla, I don't think so. Under her leadership, if you can even call it that, you'd be able to expect a completely regressed society full of brand new laws that would Probably. benefit only one person. Priscilla is self-centered, openly racist, dangerously prideful, and just utterly terrifying. She yeah. would control the public by fear and by force and wouldn't hesitate to dispose of anyone that doesn't obey her. All you people need to do is just grovel before my feet and serve me. Without a doubt, the citizens know. would quickly form rebellions and Hey, this is Konosuba, uh, the season two when we go to the Axis cult, you know, the water city, right? And Aqua's like, false god, false god. The kingdom would likely fall into a war between the people and the government. But yeah. whatever the result of that war may be, a lot of people are gonna die if she- Priscilla is a terrible fucking choice. I would not vote for her. Even felt like I think felt is equally as bad because like anarchy and like server reset sounds all good until you realize what you have to fucking go through. Like both Priscilla and Felt, I, I don't know about that. It's looking like uh, Krush, Anastasia, capitalistic hell is still better in you know in, in this kind of hell. And Amelia, it's very idealistic. Could Emily actually get shit done though after the equality stuff? Who knows? She's elected. Priscilla would be the absolute worst choice out of all five candidates, and no one in the right mind should ever consider voting for her unless you want to kiss her feet for the rest Basically, of your life. Basically, all the Fuck, same. I shouldn't have said that. Now she's gonna win. Felt didn't even want to participate in the election in the first place. I never said I wanted to be the next ruler of this stupid country. As a result of living most of her life in the slums, Felt despises nobility and wants to abolish the government entirely. Yep. Early, leaving the kingdom in a state of anarchy. Felt and that sounds cool, right? If you are from the slums and you think down with the status quo, it all sounds cool. But you're just an edgy kid that doesn't understand what's gonna happen when the local fucking government goes away and shit gets displaced. How many times have you seen Americans fucking go into different places and act as if they're the world police and displace that entire place and leave? And it turns out even fucking worse. When there's a state of anarchy, <laughs> Like, like, more shit turn goes bad. It's just, tr like, all the shitty people now are fucking competing for power. It goes crazy. Felt would relieve everyone of their power and wealth and force them to live the way she has in the past. Now, whether or not the people of the kingdom deserve this is up for debate, but anarchy would only work in Lagunica if all the citizens were committed to peace, honesty, and... Yeah, and do you think that the average monkey can unite like that? I don't think so. I think that Felt is a pretty bad choice. Probably Priscilla's the worst, then Felt. Organization. And that just isn't realistic, especially with ReZero's large capacity for villains. Oh, come on. They've corrected themselves. Dumb, dumber, and dumbest, bro. Felt's policies would benefit practically no one except for the very lowest of the bottom class. By eliminating the concept of property, the only people who would benefit would be the ones that already had nothing to begin with. This would obviously lead to violence almost immediately, yeah. and a lot of death would ensue. How like, you think shit's bad now? It's gonna get even worse. Anarchy sounds cool and all, but you're just an edgy, idealistic kid that thinks like down with the government. Let's make a nation of our own. Like you have no fucking clue what's gonna happen. And there's examples again of you know different pla different uh, mostly like American interference in different nations where they think that they're saving the people from like you know dictators and you know, warlords, but then all they do is kill that guy and leave. And guess what happens? Even more chaos ensues. However, with no government, there technically isn't any laws prohibiting murder and theft, so the true winners under Felt's leadership would be the strong. The weak would die out, and the strong would get rich. It would It'd be survival of the fittest, and that kind of society, I bet, is way worse than what exists now. Be a complete disaster, and there would be conflict at every turn, but surprisingly, Felt might actually have the most legitimate claim to the throne. I doubt- Yeah.
<laughs> you remember, she is the kidnapped princess 15 years ago. Anyone would actually vote for her, but they might not have to. In Lagunica, blonde hair and red eyes is a sign of having royal blood. And this Fang. combination is very rare, but for some reason, Felt's appearance matches it perfectly. On top of that, the insignia chose Felt for some reason, which further implies that she has some claim to the throne. She's special. If she is indeed the last surviving member of the royal family, then she should win the election by default. Nah, Capella. Capella should win the election by default. Yeah, what's Capella's policies for Lugunica? Fault. However, because the entire royal family is dead, it would be incredibly difficult to prove that Felt is actually related to them. But even if Felt is the rightful heir to the throne, voting for her would be a terrible, terrible mistake. Yep. And that leaves us with- I still think that, um... What's worse, Priscilla or Felt? I think they're pretty bad. Maybe we would have more immediate results. I think that maybe they're tied for fucking dead last because like complete anarchy versus a slow decline through dictatorship. Who knows? They're, they're both really fucking bad, but they're definitely bottom tier for me. Middle of the pack would probably be Amelia. The idealistic equality stuff sounds good on paper, but then what after? Can you actually like improve the life of everyone else? I'm not sure. Amelia is then like the middle and then it's Anastasia. Capitalistic hell. It's still better than complete anarchy and whatever, you know, naive idealism that Amelia might have. I, I, I think it might be better. And then it's probably going to be Krush at the top. And even if Krush's ideologies are, you know, not perfect, it's a working solution. Mistake. And that leaves us with Amelia, the main heroine of my favorite anime. Amelia is a silver-haired half-elf who's been discriminated against her entire life. But despite how she's treated by others, Amelia is still one of the most kind-hearted characters in the entire series. Her goal is to create a future where everyone is treated equally, regardless of social status, race, and blood. I have only one wish. Equality for everyone. That bitch fucking lied, and Rosal knows it. <laughs> what? You just want to melt the people in Elior Forest, liar. No, I'm kidding. I desire to create a nation where all citizens are equal. Now this would, without a doubt, cause a lot of conflict between the lower and upper classes. The working mm -hmm. people would support this idea, but the knights and nobility would strongly oppose it. Yep. There's also a lot of racism in Lagunica, especially considering the demi-human war was less than 50 years ago, so the racist community wouldn't be very fond of this idea either. Tag it. Frozen Bond. Oh, shut the fuck up. Teresia hard carries. Y'all didn't do shit. Equality Ugh. for everyone would end segregation and give demi humans the same rights as full humans. I think that, like, if we think of, like, 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 would this work in practice? Probably not. But if we go with like the theoretical like like absolute of like yeah, let's let's think about like a, like <sighs> but then that could be said for everything. Like what I'm trying to say is rather than thinking of what's practical, let's just take their policies and just think that it would work. Then everyone's would work. Anastasia would be perfect, right? Everyone would be uplifted and living in, in living in you know everyone would be rich. Priscilla would make sure that everyone get lucky. It's, I don't know. I, it just. It sounds good on paper for sure. Amelia's policies definitely sounds good. Plus, Amelia is a demi-human herself, so I highly doubt the racist people will vote for her. Amelia would also most likely end the monarchy altogether and transition Lagunica towards a more democratic government rather than one where the ruler alone makes all the decisions. Ending the monarchy is probably the safest option in the long run because, I mean, eventually the ruler is going to be someone like Priscilla, so mm. I think it would be best to take her power away before she even has the opportunity to abuse it. But Smart. anyway, Amelia... Amelia being elected would pretty much start a revolution. Her policies would change the lives of basically everyone, and there would definitely be a lot of resistance at first. There's gonna be a lot of bloodshed, 100%. If you thought there was gonna be bloodshed for felt stuff, I think the Amelia stuff, regarding all the segregation, the racism, the demi-human war again, just happening like only just like a couple decades ago, right? Like, I think this shit will go fucking crazy. People will be up in arms, but... After that, maybe things would be pretty good. First, probably some death and violence as well, but in the end, Lagunica would have a brighter future thanks yeah. to Amelia. So, like, you'd have to suffer in the short... Maybe you'd have to suffer in the beginning for, like, a better outcome long-term. And that long-term outcome would probably be better than any person's um, uh, policies. 
even Krush, right? I think Krush is like a safe answer. So in terms of who I would vote for, right? Like Felt and Priscilla, fuck no. Anastasia is like in the middle of the pack. And then it's Emilia and Krush. Emilia is the idealistic good answer where in the long term there's even more payoff. And Krush is like the safe answer. I don't know which one is the best though. But Amelia does have selfish motives as well, and she's humble enough to admit that. Elior Forest. Participating in the royal selection for Aww. selfish reasons too. I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm just gonna say that something happened in her past, and she believes that. Three years ago, with season two, not maybe during that time, you know, it wasn't you know covering all that shit with uh, the frozen elves. That becoming the ruler of the kingdom is the only way to fix it. So there are some personal goals that Amelia is hoping to fulfill as well, but she does truly believe that equality for all would be the best future for Laguna. Yes, sir. Amelia has good intentions, but electing her would be a gamble. I think Krush would. Exactly right. Amelia is a very volatile gamble. Who know we have to suffer first to get the payoff, but the payoff is gonna be better in Krush. However, Krush is the safe bet. And if you want a working solution and like you don't wanna jeopardize like, like you don't wanna fucking jeopardize the entire nation, Krush is definitely gonna be the main bet. But if you want a high risk high reward, maybe Amelia. And then if all of that fails, Anastasia's capitalistic hellscape, that's still gonna be better than whatever fucking anarchy Priscilla and Felt's gonna bring would be the safest choice if you want to avoid conflict within the kingdom while Amelia would lead Lagunica towards the best possible future but would essentially start a revolution and potentially even a war. Anastasia would be another safe option but I don't think she'd be the best leader for everyone. Felt is only appealing to a very small percentage of the population and Priscilla is only appealing to herself. The Sims. So I'm gonna lock in my answer. I Probably Amelia, of course, right? It's, it's, it's definitely gonna be Amelia here. I am voting for Amelia. Yeah. Let's start a revolution. I believe in Amelia. My comrades. I think she can do it. It'll take a lot of preparation and precautions to make sure the transition of power is peaceful. But I have faith in Amelia. The transition of power is not gonna be peaceful. Oh my. God. I think Amelia will lead the kingdom down the best path. We might have some conflict and maybe some sacrifices made along the way. Some sacrifices made, some conflict for sure. Hey, but I think it'll be worth it in the end. Now, obviously, if Otto was running, I'd vote for him by default, but let me know who you guys would vote for. I who would have genuine... <laughs> Yo, Loki Wilhelm, maybe? I don't know shit about his politics, but something about him just feels so like humble now as like an old man. Not the young Wilhelm, I'm talking about now Wilhelm. Vote Ram would be crazy. Ram would be the same, almost the same as like Priscilla. Uh, maybe it's the Appa salesman, man. Maybe sometimes we just need to vote in. We know, you know who the best leaders are? The best leaders are those who don't want the power. Truly. The best leaders are those that do not want the spotlight but are actually grounded in reality and thinks about the common person. Appa man. Karamon Rish has my vote. I read all the comments, so I'm curious to see who you guys would pick. Also, if you haven't seen- Appa guy. Appa guy is my pick. Please go give Mr. Echidna a like on the video. Check out his channel if you haven't. Here's the link. And I will see you guys next time.